What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. In today's video we are going to be expanding our one GPU budget rig and adding an additional three more graphics cards. Welcome back guys. So a few months ago we started a budget crypto mining series and our whole goal was to build a crypto mining rig on a budget. And we started out with our first video in that series explaining the parts that we were purchasing and going through our parts list and the cost. And we had a budget of $500 USD. In our second video, we moved on and we did a full build showing you guys step by step how to build a crypto mining rig with those parts and a single GPU. And finally, we followed up with that uh, uh, video and moved on to a video talking about uh, how much money we made off of that rig, and that was utilizing this guy right here, which was an MSI 1660 Super. Well, it's been a few months, and now it's time to expand. So we've gone ahead and bought a few additional parts, all on a budget with price in mind, keeping things as low as possible. And let's go ahead and discuss the parts that we picked up, and then we'll install them and show you guys exactly what we're doing. Okay, guys, here we have it. Here is our $500 GPU mining rig. It's a one GPU mining rig based off of a MSI motherboard, a small little 460 watt EVGA power supply, and we have an i3 6100T CPU. We built this entire rig for a total of $500. And if you guys are coming to the channel for the very first time, welcome. I'm super happy to have you guys. There are three videos that got us to this point, as I talked about at the top of this video. I'll put links to them down below. The first one was our parts list and how we went ahead and bought everything for $500. Our second one was the actual build video teaching you how to build this rig identically the way it is. And finally, the last video was talking about our profitability on our one GPU. So let's talk about how we're expanding here. So we've picked up three additional cards, all very minimally on a budget with uh, the cost being as low as we could really get. I wanted to have the mindset of our beginner miners and people just getting in the door without a huge budget. So our first card that we picked up uh, is this one here, and this was for $150. And this is an EVGA GeForce GTX 1060, and this is the six gig. We then have two other cards in mind. Now, this one's a six gig and this one's a six gig. So we can continue to mine Ethereum. These two are not, these are four gig cards. And I wanted to pick these up because one, I wanted to mine Ethereum classic with them. And two, I wanted to give some love to the four gig market. So these are, and I know Red Fox Crypto and Trump Change are gonna love these guys. These are Gigabyte AMD R9 380s. So these are four gigabyte GPUs. We picked these up for $90 each and we will be mining Ethereum classic with these. So we currently have a 400 and uh, our 460 watt power supply in our budget rig now. We do need to replace that. And we, we, we knew that starting from the very beginning that we would have to replace that. So in order to support these additional graphics cards, as you guys can see, we're gonna use more watts than that can handle for four graphics cards. So we've beefed it up. We've gone from 460 to a super flower 650. And I'll put a link down to this below. This was $47.99, and it comes with the supporting cables, as you guys can see here in the back. Other items that we are going to need is we are going to need GPU risers. So that's what these are right here. I did have these available, so they didn't cost me anything separately, uh, but I'll put links down below to these. And if you guys are looking for, I have a discount code uh, to get uh, a pretty substantial amount off at gpurisers.com. And if you remember, we went ahead and bought an off-brand one right off of Amazon uh, because it was within our budget and it came with our USB A to A and then it also came with our X1 slot adapter. So these come with that as well. We have four of those there to, to support these three cards and we'll replace the one up there with, with these guys. Um, these have more capacitors on them, uh, which these have very few, maybe four max, maybe even, I don't even know, I'll have to look on this guy. Uh, but I wanted to upgrade it just to be safe uh, because we did have the additional funds. And finally, we will need these PCI splitters. One will go to the riser and one will go to the graphics card. So what is next? Well, these cards we just got in more recently and uh, we're gonna put them to use here. So our next step is we need to replace our power supply. So let me get this guy uninstalled 
and this guy installed, and then we'll be ready to move forward. So our 460 watt power supply is uninstalled. And now here is our Super Flower 650 watt. Big difference, as you guys can see, you know, we bought this on a budget. I think this one was uh, $29 to start with, and it's uh, not modular in any way. Modular means that you do have um, these additional ports that you can plug in and you plug in what you need versus here, everything is already pre-wired directly into it. So this is really nice as a miner because there's a lot of these that you don't need. Now, the nice thing about Super Flower and why I highly recommend these is take a look. It says universal. So it's not like this one has to be dedicated to CPU and this one has to be dedicated, you know, these two have to be dedicated to SATA. Nope, they're all universal all the way through except for the motherboard. So that's why I've really started to buy more and more of these super flowers because I like the fact of being able to pick and choose actually what do I, I install and it keeps our setups clean. So we got our card uninstalled here. Over here we have our old riser setup. So let me get our new power supply installed. So the super flower is installed and good to go. Installed here, we wired to our motherboard and we also wired to our CPU. We have our power supply cables now here in the back. And as you can see, we're using our splitters. So that one, two, three, and four GPUs will be covered with these. Each one will go ahead and do a riser and also a graphics card. Nice thing is these GPUs are not super power hungry at the end of the day. So it's not like we're running 3080s off of this or anything like that. So our next step, our next step is we're going to swap over to an overhead cam and we're going to get our four GPUs installed. Okay guys, so it's been about a week and I ran into some snags and, and it's just the, the way that mining goes and I wanted to share those with you. So the R9 380s, for the life of me, I could not get them to mine on this rig. Now on my test bench here, they work fine. No problem, mine Ethereum Classic. But on this rig, I could not for the life of me get them to work. So for all intents and purposes, I actually went and picked up two 1060s uh, and nab those. So now we have three 1060s and a 1660 Super. Still staying within those low budget GPUs was my goal. So I wanted to show you guys a few settings though. So on a lot of these like MSI boards and a lot of these boards that aren't specifically for mining, but they do have the slots uh, capable for it, you do need to make a few settings. So in the MSI BIOS, you can actually, and it's pretty common for a lot of them, you go to settings and then under advanced, you have PCI subset settings. And then you have three settings here we need to set. So first off, the above 4G memory cryptocurrency mining, you need to set that to enable. And then actually for my link speed for uh, PEG0 and PEG1, I had to set them to Gen 1. That's super, super common uh, on a lot of motherboards, regardless of the BIOS, that you need to set these settings. In addition to that, one of the settings I like to set a lot, but not necessary, is under power management. There's one that says restore after AC power loss. I set that to on. And that'll go ahead and allow you to get multiple GPUs because 
you'll mess with this for a while to get multiple GPUs on a lot of these motherboards and it just won't work. And finally you just bang your head against the wall and then realize that you have to make the 4G um, setting, decoding setting there as well as the Gen 1 setting. So let me go ahead here. Uh, I'm going to get these plugged into our motherboard and then uh, we'll go ahead and get booted into Hive OS and we'll take a look at what we're mining. Okay, so we have all of our X1 slots here plugged in. Uh, we have all of our GPU risers installed, our cards installed that we saw. So because we're going to go ahead and power this on, AC power is being restored so it instantly kicks on. You don't have to hit the power button for these at all. In addition, these actually have the new GPU riser 10 capacitor um, GPU risers, which are pretty sweet. You have the indicator lights. And then right here on the side actually has a little button that you can push. And it's going to go ahead and show you temperature. So 78 degrees Fahrenheit is what that shows there. And you can, it's all in Celsius. It'd be nice if they actually remembered hitting the button. Uh, but there we go. All set. Yeah, heck yeah. So we have our four GPUs up and mining on our little frame here. We could probably fit two more uh, with keeping some nice spacing, but you could really pack these in if you needed to. I mean, ideally with some of these smaller cards, you could probably get eight total on this frame. Uh, not that we want to push that at this point. So let me jump over to Hive OS and we'll take a look and get our overclock settings in place. All right, miners. So I took the liberty of going in and configuring our flight sheet as well as our overclock settings. So let's go ahead and show you our flight sheet here. So we do have Ethereum selected. We are mining to our Ethereum wallet on Ethermine and we're using the latest T-Rex miner. When it comes down to our overclock settings, nothing too, too crazy. We have some nice conservative overclock settings in place for our two EVGAs at the top there running on Micron memory, uh, 100 core, 1000 memory at 90 power limit. Looking at our bottom 1060, it's a little bit different. It's Hynix. Um, so I did 100 core, uh, 1000 memory and 80 power limit. When I bumped up that power limit a little bit, it actually got way too warm. Uh, so I do need to critique this one a little bit. I might go to 1200 memory. We'll have to see. And then finally on our 1660 Ti, you can see we're actually at 930 core, 2280 memory and 71 or 75 power limit. Now, if you have similar cards, make sure you take a look at the memory. The memory is something that is critical when it comes down to your uh, actually overclock settings. What works for one type of memory type, Micron, Hynix, uh, Samsung, will not work for another. You know, they're very, very picky when it comes down to that memory type. So keep an eye out on that, especially if you're looking to copy any of these settings for yourself. Okay, miners, that's gonna go ahead and wrap things up for today. I'm super excited to upgrade our budget mining rig. As a recap, we upgraded our power supply to a 650 watt of, from the 460 to support our additional graphics cards. In addition to that, we did expand past our 11660 Ti to three additional 1060s. A shame that things don't, didn't work out with our R9380s. They just didn't want to play well. So we'll have to use them in a different rig. Well, guys, if you guys are looking for any of the parts in this entire video, I'll have the links down below to everything, to the frame, to the motherboard, to the power supply, to everything you see here if you're interested in picking up any of this hardware. Thank you guys very much for following along. I do appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.